thank you uh thank you so much for giving me the chance to talk about this kind of recent result and for all of you being here so the, the structure of this talk i mean the, the title is a bit deceptive because i'm going to be talking a lot about modularized stacks talking a bit about, about modularized space as well so the structure i want to do is give you a bit of an introduction to case stability i mean most of you were in the conference before i'd like to have a more introductory talk also technical and then I will talk about the, the main results and uh, kind of like an idea of how to prove them. And if time permits, I'll focus on some applications uh, of these results in the end, some fairly trivial applications, but kind of interesting. So I will start with a bit of, uh, a bit of uh, motivation and history. So the key aim, at least from my side of algebraic geometry is to, is to, to study uh, uh, final varieties so these are varieties x where the uh, anti-canonical line bundle uh, is ample equivalently if this is a, a smooth final uh, manifold you can if you're thinking in more differential geometric terms you can think of it as having a positive Ricci curvature so in higher dimensions, these things look at as uh, higher dimensional analogs of the sphere, essentially. Um, one of the reasons it's important to study these varieties is uh, due to the MMP, a minimal model program, that says that uh, uh, Fano's, along with the calabi yau varieties and varieties of general type, uh, are essentially one of the fundamental, the three fundamental building blocks for uh, other varieties. So essentially, because of the MMP, it becomes really interesting for a lot of algebraic geometers to, to study uh, these varieties. It becomes a, an interesting problem. And the first classification we can do for these guys uh, is uh, in terms of the formation families in each uh, dimension. So. So to give you a quick overview or of how this uh, how this works in each dimension. So dimension one is just one uh, final family. It's just a P, P1. Dimension two, it's a bit more interesting. We have uh, 10 deformation families. There's, these are called the uh, Delpezza surfaces. So classically, they were studied by Pasquale Delpezzo in the end of the 19th century, so 1890s approximately. Um, and they are very well studied at this point. So these are why they're not called the uh, Fano surfaces, but the surfaces. In dimension three, uh, the number jumps a little bit. So we have 105 families. And this classification is much more recent than Del Pezzo's. It's uh, you to uh, Mori Mukai and Skowski. And this is from the 80s. And unfortunately, for dimensions uh, four and above, we uh, uh, we really we really don't know what's happening. Like we know instances of uh, deformation families of, of these uh, final of four folds or five folds and etc. But uh, we don't really know exactly how many they are. But we do know their number is bounded by a, a result by uh, Kolar, Miyoka, and Mori. So one of the key goals when we study these things, uh, as we do in many things in algebraic geometry, is to construct uh, moduli spaces. So here, the key goal essentially is uh, construct, and I would also add, uh, describe uh, uh, moduli spaces uh, for these final varieties. Okay, so this construction actually, and I'll be talking a bit the, in more detail about how this works, has been achieved very recently, and the description is going to be a motivating factor for this for this talk essentially. Um, so for this construction, essentially, we really want uh, to uh, study case stability. That's the theory that gives us the construction of what is called the K-moduli spaces, and the uh, Essentially, the reason we have all the methods in case stability are from birational geometry that allows us to describe these moduli spaces. So we emulate 
ideas from the KSBA moduli spaces, which are moduli spaces for uh, varieties of general type. Uh, and we attach a stability uh, theory to try to describe the moduli spaces, so essentially describe what we need to put in this moduli space, have something compact and possibly projective, which isn't the case for case stability. So for case stability, what is case stability is a good question, I guess. So this is the algebraic geometric theory. Uh, I guess we can attribute it to uh, uh, Tian in the 90s and then Donaldson and then a few other people. Um, and the, the, the reason for the existence of this, this theory really uh, comes from differential geometry, essentially. So the case stability was uh, developed to answer the Yao Tian Donaldson conjecture, which asks uh, when uh, a Fano, well, really manifold in this case, but then also uh, expanded to varieties, uh, admits a Keller Einstein metric. Okay, so um, a, a very celebrated result, which really initiates the study for for most of the things I'm going to say today, is a result by uh, uh, Chen, Donaldson, and Soon, which uh, solves this conjecture and says that uh, uh, a Fano manifold X admits a Keller Einstein metric if and only if X is uh, what is called K polystable. So, K stability is a really interesting theory. Essentially, it's an algebra geometric theory which imposes some stability conditions, but these stability conditions essentially have a very differential geometric meaning. They, they tell us precisely the uh, the existence conditions of these uh, Keller Einstein metrics on, on Fano manifolds. And in fact, this theorem, uh, it has been expanded to Fano varieties. So for, it has been expanded for singular Fano varieties. Which in this case, there's going to be uh, KLT uh, Fano varieties. Um, also known as uh, Q-Fano. Uh, in, in recent years, for uh, a singular uh, keller einstein matrix. So this is one of the, the latest big results uh, in this uh, Yao Tian Donaldson conjecture for, uh, for Fanos. Yao -Tian, the Yao Tian Donaldson conjecture has a generalized form, but uh, since we're dealing with uh, Fano varieties, we'll only be dealing uh, with these uh, these results. So very briefly, I, I'm not going to go too much over this, just for, I'm going to mention all these things just for completion. So how is this uh, case stability defined? Uh, so I, I will work with the more algebra geometric definition, the birational geometric definition, instead of the original definition, also known as the Fujita Lee criterion. Uh, it's not really important for the talk, it's more for having a consistent thing. Uh, so a few definitions. Uh, I take a birational morphism from my variety X, so sorry, from a variety Y to variety X, and I take a prime divisor E uh, inside Y, and I call this uh, a, a prime uh, uh, divisor over over X, which I denote by E over X. And then I can define some numerical uh, quantities. Now the log discrepancy is one, which is defined as follows. So this is one plus the order of E along this divisor here. And in fact, this is uh, independent of the choice of log resolution we pick. And the expected vanishing order So uh, S X of E, which in this case is going to be just this uh, this value over here. Okay. 
again, this is not really important. It's mostly for uh, completion, essentially. And then using these two things, I can define a beta invariant where I'm dropping the suffix of x because it's implicit. So this is just the, the difference between these two things. Uh, and the key definition theorem here due to uh, Fujita and Lee is that a variety X is uh, what is called k-stable if and only if the beta invariant uh, of E is bigger than zero for every uh, prime divisor E over X. And it is K semi-stable again, if and only if this uh, beta invariant is greater or equal than zero for every uh, prime divisor E over X, okay? So how can this case stability theory uh, define a moduli space is, is a very reasonable question, I guess. So I'll spend the next maybe five minutes talking a little bit about the K-moduli uh, spaces and stacks. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is introduce some notation that's gonna be a bit relevant later as well, as in most, of these uh, moduli theories we're thinking of, especially when we're thinking in terms of, of stacks, we're thinking of moduli functors where we're sending a scheme to some uh, to sets. So and these sets are usually some kind of uh, families of deformations of, uh, of our variety. In particular, the ones we uh, we care about are what is are called the Q Gorenstein families of Q final varieties. So what is this? This is a usual family from a pi from x to b, which is a normal base. Uh, satisfying the following. I'm running out of chalk. So yeah, so the, these these three conditions. So the first condition is that this pi has uh, normal connected fibers. So in particular, x has to be normal as well. Then this is the essentially the Q Gorenstein condition where I'm asking for this divisor here to be a pi ample and Q Cartier. Uh, the, there's the final, Q final condition where I'm asking that every fiber is, uh, KL, is Q final. So KLT final variety. And of particular interest, because we're going to be defining these modular K modular spaces in terms of uh, K stability, of particular interest are the Q Gorenstein families of K semi-stable Q finos. So so these have the exact same criteria as before, and we uh, we have the fourth criterion essentially, which says that every fiber is K semi-stable. Uh, yeah, for, for all P in the space. So using these definitions, we can start defining what is called the K-moduli functor. Before we do that, we fix uh, uh, two positive integers. So N is going to be some dimension, and V is going to be some volume. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry, you see again? 
I mean, I'm taking uh, KLT essentially because I'm taking every fiber to be KLT. Okay, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially, there's this this is this celebrated result that tells you that um, uh, as K semi stable Fano has to be KLT, and so you, it's it's enough of yours to KLT essentially. Let's see if this works. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> so the k moduli functor, which I will denote by uh, curly m k and v, will go from the category of schemes, and I'm working over c throughout essentially. So maybe I should have said this before. Uh, to sets, and really what it's going to do uh, for such a scheme s here. Um, it's going to send it to this following subset. So all um, uh, Q uh, Gorestein uh, uh, families of K semi stable uh, Q Fanos, such as like, like this, uh, such that Every fiber with dimension n and uh, volume uh, v. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm always considering schemes to be normal. I'm sorry. Yeah, but don't hate me for this. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, so sorry, what is the point of the schemes? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. No, it's essentially this is this part of this really technical condition it's called the color condition, which really comes from. Uh, um, the KSBA uh, stability theory, really. Um, and okay. there is a definition. Yeah, yeah. It, it just like, for the sake of the talk, I don't want to go into huge technicality because I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think like this collapse condition is actually probably the most technical thing to understand in all these constructions, essentially. Uh, I mean, according to my case, I guess, as well. Uh, okay. So, why is this functor important? Uh, it's uh, yes, it's important for the following reason. What is called the K-moduli theorem now, um, which is uh, actually due to too many people to name. I'm I'm just gonna name a few, uh, a few people because it's the collective work in the past maybe uh, five to seven years of uh, uh, many people who are working on on these things. Uh, but essentially, the K-moduli theorem is the following. So, uh, this the first part is that this M K N V is uh, uh, represented uh, by an Arden stack, which is in fact a quotient stack. Uh, that admits a good moduli space. Which I will usually just denote by uh, the the Roman M, so no curly M. Do let me know if it is a bit confusing. I'll try to make it more clear. Um, and the key thing is that uh, this uh, good moduli space um, is in bijection. So the close points of this uh, came out place. So the close points of uh, of this uh, M, K, and V, the moduli space are in uh, bijection uh, with uh, K polystable uh, Fanos 
of dimension n and volume v. Okay, and actually the extra step is that this is a projective uh, a proper scheme. Okay, so again, I, I said I'm going to write a few names. I guess maybe Shi Li, Xia Wei Wang, Cheng Yang Shu, and Yu uh, Chen Yu, uh, Cheng Yang Shu, and Fan Zhuang. But there's also like many other people, and these names are usually repeated in these results. I'm sorry, and I'm not naming all of you uh, if you're listening from up there, but uh, it's a it's a struggle to write all the names. But anyways, uh, this is a key. This is essentially the answering the the key goal that I mentioned before, at least for the construction part. So it gives you a well defined modular theory, defines the stack, and also you can think of the stack essentially as describing all the case semi stable final varieties of specific dimension and volume, and then it admits a proper projective modular space, which essentially is in bijection with uh, a polystable points. It really constructs a, a well-defined uh, extraordinary theory for for uh, modular theory for final varieties. Um, but the struggle for this, especially even after we have defined it, and it's a really powerful result, uh, this, the really big struggle essentially is this uh, the description part. Um, and the problem is that this is not explicit at all. So if, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, it's not always, because if you think of like in terms of GIT, for instance, it's not always a GIT quotient. It's not like really clear. The whole point is that due to some key results, you can always embed all these final varieties, these k semi stable final varieties of fixed volume and dimension to some larger projective space and then take a, a Hilbert scheme. But uh, first of all, the construction of this Hilbert scheme is not clear because it's not implicit. And then it's not really necessarily clear that you have a GAT quotient there, just a quotient stack. It's, a, it's an interesting question because, okay, so I'll mention a few things after, and you'll see that in most cases, at least for the results that we know, these explicit descriptions of these uh, K moduli or the connected components of K moduli spaces, they're always coming from uh, some GAT quotient. But the reason for this, I think, is more of our lack of knowledge on how to do anything else rather than. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, but you need this stability condition essentially that allows you to embed it to the Hilbert scheme. Yeah. That, that's the that's the key part essentially. Like you need this uh, you need the stability uh, of uh, of the case semi stable final varieties because you have bounded instant openness that allows you to embed it into a. Uh, a, a quotient stack, and then showing that it's uh, actually that showing that it has a good moduli space is in on its own uh, a feature of case stability. So yeah, so as I mentioned before, this, these descriptions are not really clear. Like um, we have a few results and I'm just gonna go over them very quickly. Um, uh, but then if we if we really focus on how we describe these moduli spaces, uh, the, the key point essentially the motivation of this talk essentially is that we need to find some, some methods that allow us to describe them uh, in more generality. So here, uh, what I need to say is that uh, MK two uh, V is uh, described fully. Uh, and this is due to uh, Mabuchi Mukai from 90s, I think, and Odaka Kotian Soon from 2017. And this is always described for, for any uh, uh, volume V, essentially. That's the, the key thing here. So a, a key observer might have noticed that this, this theorem I mentioned is 
the last uh, five to seven years, so maybe 2014 to 22, I should say. And these results kind of predate them. And the reason is that these, uh, these descriptions really follow some analytic constructions. They, they do this uh, descriptions for uh, analytically by finding which of these deformation families admit a keller einstein metric. Um, okay. So they, really, they work really well for the Depuzzo uh, varieties, so the, the Depuzzo surfaces, sorry. Uh, but, um, the idea is that may, these techniques should not extend naturally to um, higher, higher dimensions. And then uh, we know some, we have explicit descriptions. Yep. Yeah, here, here, I guess, I mean, I'm always taking X smooth in, in the previous description I had here. here. So, yeah, it's a good question, actually. So, yeah, I'm, here I'm talking about explicitly having a smooth member and then finding the deformation family around the smooth member. Um, yeah, so that we have explicit con uh, descriptions for uh, uh, connected components. of uh, MK3V, uh, MK4V, and some uh, more general MK and V, which I'll, I'll, I'll say in a second. So here, what I really mean is um, there may be a lot of deformation families that admit the same volume, uh, and, it's, and it's really hard to describe this holistically because we have to find case stability in each different example. So each deformation family defines a connected component of this K moduli uh, stack that we described that also admits a good moduli space, uh, essentially. Um, you know. So explicit description, I really mean that I, I can tell you exactly what is the semi-stable, uh, what are the semi-stable points, this is the polystable points, the stable points. So I have like a complete description of what is happening like in terms of this. Uh, in most cases, yes. Yeah, yeah. So because again, as I mentioned before, in most of these cases, the way you do this is by by essentially relating it to some GIT quotient, and you either show that it's either isomorphic to the GIT quotient, in which case you know the stack structure, or you show it's a modification of the GIT quotient, like a stacky blow up or something like that. Um, so yeah, in in all these cases, you know the the stack structure. Uh, so yeah, so a few names here. Uh. You and Shu and uh, seventeen, uh, they did uh, this for cubic three folds, uh, and then uh, you a few years later uh, did this for cubic four folds, and then uh, Spotty and Shu again using most of these analytical techniques that I mentioned before, uh, they described this for complete intersections of uh, two quadrics. Uh, in any demo, any P, P N where N is better than four. Uh, and then this in particular, this particular brand of the problem is something that a lot of people have been working really recently. So I had some results a few years ago on this uh, for one of the deformation families, uh, in a really big collaboration with Aban, uh, Celso, and many other people. We found uh, the, uh, we completely describe the connected components for all the one-dimensional uh, connected components, essentially, of these uh, K-moduli stacks. Um, and there's other results, uh, which I won't go over uh, in too much detail, essentially. Uh, so the question is, and I mentioned, I kind of hit into this, uh, the question is, are there uh, general methods Uh, to study case stability. And the answer is yes, um, there are a few. So uh, the first one that I can't, I can't think of is by, by Rui, uh, by Rui Durban in 2016, where he studied case stability uh, of finite covers and essentially showed that case stability is unpreserved by the finite covers. So it's, uh, if a variety is case stable, then the a cover is also case stable and vice versa. And this has seen some use in the uh, as a as a uh, as a method to start describing some of these uh, uh, like the components of the K moduli. Another result is the Aban Zwang method, 
which also has found uh, some use. But the, the main key thing I will be dealing with, and essentially is, is what I will be expanding on on this talk, is a theorem from uh, uh, 2019 by Ricoin where he proved the following. So if you let x to be the product of two final varieties, uh, x is uh, k semi uh, poly stable if and only if uh, xi are both uh, k semi poly stable. So this result essentially in all this machinery it starts to hint that maybe there is a concrete, um, a quick, a concrete like product theorem for K moduli, essentially. But the big difficulty, and because we mentioned some deformation theory and all these things, that the big difficulty is, although we have this result that's really powerful, there might be a case when we're considering limits of this, like deformations of this, these may not necessarily be products. And so we may not have the same thing. But in reality, and this is kind of like the main content of the talk, essentially, like the main results that we're talking about now. Um, the uh, case stability condition that we're imposing really uh, does not allow us that to happen. So we do have a, K, uh, a product theorem for K module, essentially, extending this, uh, uh, this result by Juan. So the way this, this comes into play is in, uh, in two theorems I'll present now, and these are essentially well, the main results of the talk. So one really details the, the local structure and the other um, the other has a more global stacky uh, picture along some connected components. <clears throat> okay. So these are the uh, main results. So what I will be naming as theorem one is this uh, local picture. Okay, so I will take fairly new to be uh, connected a component of um, the k moduli stack, fixing some volume, some volume um, and uh, dimension. And I will also assume that a point x inside this curly m is a product. So meaning then it will be isomorphic to some product of x1 and x2. Then uh, every point in this curly M is uh, also a product. Another key thing is the uh, passing uh, uh, to an Atal cover Uh, the universal family also splits it as a product. Okay, so this is, I think, the most often result you can get is actually the local picture. And I will describe a little bit that uh, will be probably the most technical part of this, and 15 minutes, uh, where I will describe. Uh, the idea of how you do the thing works. Uh, but before I do so, I'll also list the second one so that you have keep in mind what is happening essentially. So uh, here, just, just in terms of terminology, if I take a X, a K semi-stable uh, Q final variety, um, I will denote by uh, curly M K X. Yeah. 
Uh, over over the family. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so I take uh, case semi stable Kifano. I I will denote by this the um. So let's say uh, this has dimension n and volume p. Okay. So this is uh the connected uh component. Sorry, reduced connected component of the larger stack um, uh, so that's, that, that contains essentially this, uh, this X. So again, here you might have noticed the discrepancy. I'm not talking about being reduced here while I'm talking about being reduced here. The reason for this is that it's a bit of a technical thing, but I also I know when this is uh, a reduced connecting component, I can always describe it as a quotient stack and then I can run specific. Uh, I'm not sure about this, actually. I'm not sure about this. Um, I had thought about it, but um, it's not so clear to me, actually. I'm pretty confident that the reduced structure works. And I know why here you don't need reduced. Uh, yeah. But uh, there's a big gray area here, essentially. Um, I mean, I guess, I, in theory, you could possibly do the same thing, but it requires some some care, essentially. Uh, yeah. The connected component of this larger, uh, the k-moduli stack, that contains my uh, k semi stable key final x. Does that make sense? Oh, this part? Do you want me to rewrite this? OK. <laughs> Take x, a case semi stable Kifano of yeah. dimension n and volume v, and define by curly mkx the, con the reduced connected component of mk and v that contains x. No, 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 no. This is a term. No, no, no. I'm not concluding anything. No, 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 no. no. You're right. No conclusion. <laughs> Just uh, uh, prelude yeah. to set up uh, theorem two. Uh, so the global picture is so the global picture is if x one and uh, x two are non isomorphic simple cubanos. And here by simple, I really mean they, they, they don't have any uh, decomposition into products of lower dimensional founder varieties. So if these are simple q fanos, then the product of these two um, the product of these two uh, reduced connected components is as stacks essentially is isomorphic to uh, the reduced connected component of their product. Um, <clears throat> And this actually holds in the level of uh, k modulic spaces by, by some descent, essentially. And if these are, in fact, the same, then the product of these two guys is also a quotient stack, which is given uh, as the product of this stack mode out S2, where S2 is the symmetric group of order two. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, let's give some idea of the proof of one. Yep. How many, how many this is the case? I mean, so the x and the x are the same deformation type? No, 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 they're not the same deformation type. Essentially, the, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, yeah, like essentially think of like taking two completely different families, like two elements of the different families, and then. Uh. No, no, no. You MKX times MKX, and then you have. Let me check what 
Yeah, I think I think this and you should not spray. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, sorry, yeah. I, I got confused myself there, yeah. Uh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so the idea of proof is uh, for one. <sighs> to define like, I'll need to define a few things really fast. So uh, for scheme X, I take uh, the uh, canonical uh, curly curly X, which is the DM uh, stack uh, with coarse moduli space. Uh, X uh, and it's isomorphic. So this is the coarse moduli space. And this is an isomorphism uh, over the Gorenstein locus. But in particular, if X is Gorenstein, this is an isomorphism. Um, <clears throat> okay, so here, as usual, Uh, this is the uh, is x group of uh, the cotangent complex of qgi yeah so essentially q Yes. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's actually better to just write curly x here, I guess. But 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 you you really because you're really tracking the Q Gorenstein deformations and say that's the that's the key point essentially this definition. So there's the cotangent complex of this uh, curly x, uh, and the first one is the tangent space, and the second one is an obstruction space for uh, f q g x. So the Q Gorenstein deformation functor of x. First thing we prove is that if X and Y are Q Pano, there's a natural map between the corresponding deformation functors as follows. Which is in fact an isomorphism. Okay, so essentially this tells me the Q Gorenstein deformations of the product are actually Q Gorenstein deformations, products of the Q Gorenstein deformations of each uh, of each component. And then after having this, essentially, I already know that the local structure, the local picture of this connected component I have in theorem one, this is going to have, it's always going to look like a product. So then the technical thing essentially is in terms of this uh, universal family splitting that I mentioned, where I take uh, <clears throat> I take some uh, m uh, x inside curly m, where this is a product, and then I take a flat uh, projective uh, vibration onto a smooth base. by uh, phi curly x b essentially i want the central fiber to be isomorphic to x okay and then uh, i find an Intel cover such that i can define Q 
two different vibrations. To the space where uh, the central fibers are my xi, and this um, and this original vibration decomposes as a product. So uh, curly x and u is curly x i uh, times curly x one two. Essentially, this gives me. Uh, no, 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 they're, they're over the same, uh, yeah. Uh, no, 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 let me think, let me think, let me think. Um, no, 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 they're not over the same base. Uh, they're not over you. Yeah. Okay, so um, the technical thing essentially here is I use one of the results in uh, Zhuang's paper uh, that has uh, an openness result of this form uh, for uh, an analytic neighborhood. And I use an Artin approximation to define an Antal cover um, and run essentially like a very similar argument to get this. So then, <clears throat> uh, so then the, essentially this theorem is concluded by the uniqueness Okay, of uh, uh, k polystable degenerations and the properness of k moduli space and the, the the first theorem I mentioned before essentially like immediately I know that uh, every k polystable degeneration has to be a product and by properness uh, I know the k semi stable ones have to be products as well and the key thing about the non reduced structure essentially is um, that because I know the local structure of this uh, K-moduli stack, which looks like this, so the local structure will look uh, look like this. It will decompose as a product. So well, this is the the ring of uh, you know, Gugorenstein universal deformations. This is not necessarily reduced, so I can have a non-reduced structure. Okay. So the, the, the moral of the story is the only Um, kind of. Uh, not really. I mean, this. So this. The first part is not. Um, is not just for simple finals. It's a general thing. Um, and the second theorem, essentially, like you can keep repeating it, uh, even if you don't have simple finals, yeah. you get similar results. Uh, but if you mean like you only need to study the simple finals in order to extend. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. And the reason is actually, it's a good point because it's a it's a, it really segues well to the proof of theorem too. So the first part of the proof of theorem two is a is a structure theorem for k for q fine varieties. So I I'm pretty sure that experts uh, knew this even before I proved this for this paper, but uh, I couldn't find it anywhere. But it's a very simple result. Essentially, what it says is, uh, given uh, Q Fano uh, X, which has the following uh, decomposition into simples, uh, this decomposition is unique. Meaning, and I'm not going to write it, but meaning if I have a different decomposition, um, I will have to have the same number L here, and I will have to have some, uh, like if I have a decomposition like this, uh, L must be M and um, and there must be some uh, sigma in the uh, symmetric group such that Xi is isomorphic to Y sigma I, essentially. So this the composition is unique. Um, and then the key idea here for prove, like finalizing the proof of theorem two is constructing a uh, construct morphism
So this is not just for uh, simple funnels. It can work for every funnels um, as follows. So I usually denote this as product x1, x2. Um, and this goes here. So you can derive this, this the definition of this um, of this morphism in in two ways essentially. Uh, the first way is directly using uh, Zhuang Zhuang's results. The other thing is, and it's a bit more interesting if you look at how if you prove essentially these uh, Q Gorenstein K semi stable Q Fano families decompose uh, as products, uh, then you have a uh, essentially a map of functors and you have a well-defined morphism. Uh, and the theorem here essentially really ties again before to, okay, you only need to prove this for simple things. So assume x1, x2 are simple and they're not isomorphic and they're not diffeomorphic. They're not, uh, yeah, they're not, they don't live in the same deformation family. Um, then this map prod is uh, an isomorphism, which also descends to an isomorphism of the good moduli spaces. And the idea for this is really theorem one uh, tells you uh, this prod is an open immersion. Okay, so it's an open immersion of stacks. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm kind of cheating here. Okay, I'm kind of cheating here. So theorem one tells you the map is open and then you can show that it's representable and uh, essentially injective. So this means that it will have to be an open immersion. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of cheating the details here. But, uh, but yeah, so this is an open immersion really from zero one and just proving representability, which is not really particularly hard. The the second step, uh, it's the first step. The second step is to prove that uh, this map is quasi finite, and essentially this is where you kind of need the reduced structure, where you know exactly what is happening uh, in terms of quotient stacks, because you can pass to a a, a G torsor which could decompose as a product, then you prove quasi-finiteness on this level and it descends to a tallness. So you have uh, quasi-finiteness, probably the most technical part of the, the proof, I guess. Um, and the third part is that if you know that this is quasi-finite, you know that the map on the good moduli spaces is also uh, is uh, finite. And then the last step is you combine all of the above uh, and a result from Alper's original uh, paper on good moduli, which I think is 09, um, uh, tells you that the map prod is uh, finite. It's a finite open immersion by the Zariski, uh, Zariski's main theorem for stacks. So this is an isomorphism. And then using pretty much like a very similar method, uh, you saw that if x1 is isomorphic to x2, which I will denote by x, is also simple, uh, then uh, the map is a tal. Uh, and the way you show it essentially is by showing that it's an S2 gerb, which proves uh, the second part of this theorem, which is this, which uh, I mentioned before. Okay, so do I have maybe two minutes to give a very quick application? Is that is that okay? Okay, uh, actually, maybe a, a couple of remarks. So the first remark is I've only been talking about final varieties, uh, but uh, uh, case stability is defined for uh, log final pairs as well. It's a very natural thing. The key moduli space is also extended to log final pairs. So uh, theorem two um, extends. Uh, to uh, log final pairs, which I haven't, I decided not to write about it because 
I think of this as more illuminating, but it's also because theorem one um, doesn't necessarily uh, work that well due to the deformation theory. Um, essentially, like the divisors, something weird is happening when you're attaching the divisors, essentially. Remark two is uh, that uh, but uh, Ho, uh, Patak Palvi, uh, and Schnell in 2012 uh, proved uh, something very similar. Uh, for KSPA moduli, But, uh, and it's actually part of the motivation really that uh, since this works for K moduli, for KSBA moduli, maybe this extends for uh, K, K moduli spaces. Um, uh, but the methods are a bit different due to the uh, peculiarity, the, the different situation. Essentially, you don't have an Arden stack, you have a DM stack with a coarse moduli space, it's a bit different. So the, the methods, the, some of the deformation theory stuff are similar, but they're unique to the situation essentially. And as a as a quick application, uh, maybe very quick. A two minute application, which again is fairly trivial given what I've discussed so far, but <clears throat> So yeah, so I take X to be P1. I take Y, which I denote by Y n min nine minus N to be the blow up of uh, P2 in N points where N is going to be between uh, eight and five. So essentially eight, uh, this Y is a del Pezzo surface. So these are the smooth del Pezzo surfaces of degrees one, two, three, and four. And the variety this variety here uh, is, uh, well, the smooth element essentially uh, is the general element of the of the deformation families of final three folds: seven point one, eight point one, nine point one, and ten point one. Where the first letter is the Picard rank of this thing, and uh, in fact, for these Picard ranks, there's only one of these uh, deformation families. Um, they're just described like this. Uh, so let's name this maybe Z. And now the connected component MKZ is in fact isomorphic the connected component MK Y uh, Y N nine minus N because P1 doesn't have anything. Okay. Um, and because of previous results by Odaka, Spoli, Soon, Mabuchi, Mukai, as the ones I mentioned before, uh, what you have is, so let's name them maybe that N minus N. So uh, the moduli space, which is a bit easier to describe than the stack, I guess. So the moduli space of Z4, which is the 7.1, this is uh, uh, this GAT quotient. we know is, I think, P123. And then uh, this is, again, another GAT quotient. Um, so these are uh, all the uh, cubic surfaces in P3. And Subgroup is PGL4, and this is P1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And uh, yeah, for Z2, this is a blow up of another JT quotient of uh, all quartic curves in, uh, in P2. where I'm blowing up along the uh, double conic. 
And essentially, okay, these results were already known by Odaka Spotty. This is Mabuchi Mukai, and these are Odaka Spotty soon. Um, but essentially, this immediately gives you a description of all of the connected components of k moduli spaces for fun of three posts with high Picard rank, uh, especially like seven, eight, nine, and 10, because I think you don't have any moduli spaces for rank five, I may be wrong. But it's essentially like a trivial application and demonstration of how this uh, general result could be applied in more general situations. Thank you. Uh, For this theorem two, you mean? Yeah, so it's like it's kind of what I mentioned before. Um, uh, let me use this. Never use this. So when I have the reduced thing, I know exactly uh, how this uh, that this is a. Uh, uh, quotient stack essentially, uh, and I don't really know this with the reduced thing. So when I'm trying to prove quasi finiteness, things can go wrong essentially. Whereas here, because I have this uh, reduced structure, um, uh, it, everything works out essentially. Yeah, I think so. I think so, because openness kind of follows from the first uh, stuff essentially, uh, from theorem one. Because uh, you don't do reduce structure, uh, and yeah, uh, yeah, it's a bit, and it's a bit more complicated when you're dealing with log final pairs, actually. So I think there you might have to uh, assume the reduced uh, structure. No, no. Uh, no, it's a good question, actually. But I think this is very largely unknown. I think it's been studied. 